right, so hello everyone. Um, welcome to week three of our Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy course. I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia and today I am talking to Verbena Bottini who is um, one of our facilitators who's been working on week three. Hi Verbena. Hello Rachel, how are you? Good, thank you. So um, this is week three. The, uh, last week we were working, looking at typical and atypical development in children um, and some of the development um, changes in children with cerebral palsy. So we have a good understanding of that now. And then moving into week three, we'll be working on positioning and handling. So Verbena, you have been the facilitator on this week, putting together all the content. So maybe... Could you just um, tell us a little bit about yourself, first of all? And I know you're in Kabul, so it would be interesting to hear about your context and then also what we'll be covering in week three. Yes, so my name yes. is Verbena. I'm a physiotherapist for the International Committee of the Red Cross. I've been working for the ICRC uh, since last three years. And um, I actually had a long mission in Afghanistan for two years, first in 2013 and 14, and I recently came back. Uh, I support the rehabilitation center here in Afghanistan, and currently I am in Kabul. And um, Afghanistan, of course, as everyone knows, is a war country, so it's a very challenging environment. We have um, a lot of children with cerebral palsy. So one third of all our patients admitted at the rehabilitation center are children with cerebral palsy. So it's a big workload. And uh, as well, we have limited facilities and, and uh, capacity. So it's really challenging to provide uh, um, good and qualitative service to this uh, group of patients. I have been working with children um, for a few years now, especially since I started doing humanitarian uh, work. Um, before, I've been working with uh, patients um, affected by neurological conditions. So I'm specialized in neurological uh, rehabilitation and I am a Bobat therapist. Great. So it sounds very challenging in the context that you work in. Um, before I just ask you about week three, what are your what are the main challenges and what do you how do you overcome them in your situation? I think the biggest challenge for us is uh, the huge amount of children uh, we see every day. Uh, so it's very difficult to plan our, our treatment and give enough space to mother training as we want the mothers and the caregiver in general to be able to carry on the treatment at home. That actually is the most important part of, of our intervention. Uh, so, yeah, I would say that the big challenge is really to try to provide efficient training of the caregivers in order to enable them to carry on the activity with the children at home. Yeah, that's good. And I think we've talked a little bit about that already in week one and week two, and I'm sure that's going to come through in the rest of the course as well. So, so moving into week three, this week we're covering, we're doing a little bit on the sort of interventions that we do with children with cerebral palsy. And then mainly this week we're talking about positioning and handling. So perhaps could you talk a little bit about that for us? What you think, um, what, what would you like the participants of the course to sort of really take home um, this week on the course? Um, yes, I think that is, um, it has been learned from the previous week that children with cerebral palsy have difficulty in controlling the postural tone and to adjust their posture, their position um, to, um, to perform movement in daily life activities. Therefore, uh, positioning and endly play a really important role in allowing them to experience new way of moving, experience wider repertoire of movements as sometimes they are stuck in their position and they basically move continuously with the same patterns of movement. So the basic principle of positioning and handling is actually allowing them to experience new way of moving so that their performance improve um, to carry on daily life activity more independently. Um, and, and, and I guess it's the same positioning and handling. What's the difference between in the thought process that we should have around the two? Because it's a little bit confusing with them both, they could be the same. Are they different? 
Yes, yeah, so positioning is basically seeing the child in a position and sometimes requires the use of some equipment. So you maybe lay down supine or sideline or prone and you can use some uh, rolls or towels or wedges just to allow them to maintain a nice alignment symmetry. And, um, and I would like to also underline the fact that uh, positioning means that you have to keep and hold the child suck in that position, but positioning is allowing actually the child to have a better alignment and stability to perform some activities. So positioning is actually a chance to develop some, for example, manual skills by providing more proximal stability so the child can play, uh, can use toys or NH communication skills, so allowing him to have his head upright to explore the environment, to communicate with other children around him to learn as well. So position should not be seen as a, um, as a stuck position, but should be seen in a dynamic way to allow a child to experience movement as well. And handling, handling refers actually to position is actually interconnected to position. Position of the child while you carry, you hold the child around and you make him experience movement during daily life activity. So is the way you facilitate, you guide the child to feel position and to perform movements easily. And so is, it should be easier also for the caregiver to carry on the handling. So the basic principle of handling is, of course, to let the child experience more normal way of moving while mm, motivating him to participate to the daily activity and making the life of the caregiver easier by knowing how to influence his tone, how to make him lose, how to facilitate him more easily during daily life activities. Yeah, and, and we're coming back around to that point about um, how important it is for us to teach the caregivers and the family. Um, the, it's important for us to learn these skills so that we can teach them to the caregivers and the family, um, which I think, like we've said, is going to be a common theme through this course. So um, what's just before people start on the course this week, do you have any specific key messages that you would like to tell them um, to leave them with to take on to week three? Yes, um, I have noticed while working in different countries that sometimes we see at positioning and handling in a quite passive way. So I would like to invite the participants to look into positioning and handling in a more dynamic way. And for me, it's very important that actually we integrate playing and communication to motivate the child to be in that position. So I have seen sometimes just therapies sitting the child and not interacting with him or not engaging him in any activity, just purely sitting him, expecting him to, um, to react, to change his postural tone without any stimulation. So for me, it's very important and I do believe is a key message that we try to use position and handling to let the child experience by motivating him, by playing with him, by communicating, by learning. So that's for me is really, really relevant. Yeah, and I think that that's really relevant, particularly because it's a skill we need to learn this positioning and handling or have this knowledge before we move on to weeks four and five, which are communication feeding activities of daily living and play. So it sounds like if we have a good positioning and handling then it's going to make all of that easier. So um, that sounds like um, some really good advice. Um, so this week, uh, Vivena will be around in the forums, I imagine, to answer all your questions. The forums have been amazing, the discussions. We're very, we're delighted to see everyone in there discussing, actively discussing all of all things about the course. So we look forward to seeing you in the discussions next week, this week. Um, and yeah, so I think all that remains to be said is enjoy week three, everyone. And um, thank you, Vivena, for calling in from Afghanistan. I think we managed to capture that with your internet, which has been really good. Thank you very much, Rachel. Enjoy week three. Thank you.